in the spirit of the podcast movement and the the growth of long form discussion I'm going to talk as long as I have something to say about this topic okay I'm going to try to wrap up some sort of point at the 10 minute mark because I'm gonna cut that and put that up on IGTV uh, if you're watching this on YouTube um, sit back and relax I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it I'm gonna talk about my impressions of Jordan B Peterson I'm gonna talk about how I consider him a useful note in the sea of incredible teachers that we can find out there that are more and more accessible to us because of this day and age of YouTube and the you know the connectedness of the internet and I'm also going to share my my whole point like what's who I, what I'm all about and uh, who I am as a student and a teacher in this world so you can understand my perspective how I'm coming to my opinions about these teachers based on who I am and where I'm at so why don't I start there my name is Tim Welch I'm a vocal instructor and I'm an entrepreneur I've started a vocal method where I teach where I help instructors learn how to become vocal better vocal instructors and they become a part of the program and uh, we've been expanding and growing and um, I have a daughter I am divorced I have a beautiful uh, mindful spiritual super connected relationship with a partner right now um, I'm in the best health of my life I'm 42 uh, as far as egoic real world labels, I, let's just stop there. Okay, I teach, so I te also teach mindfulness. I have a channel, uh, Selfless Awakening, and my idea of Selfless Awakening is this: I've had, a, I've had profound experiences in the evolution of my own consciousness in my life throughout teens, twenties, thirties, now into the forties, where there is this shift in what I'm identifying with as who I truly am and in very specific terms as clear and sort of down to earth as I can say it I'm becoming more and more aware of the what Buddhists might say the higher self the true self the the camera that's observing your, that can observe your thoughts that's always it's always there I feel I'm walking more and more through my day and aware of every thought that's coming in my head and I'm aware of how just sensations in my body, I'm aware of the actual awareness itself. And it's when I'm identified with that that I realize I'm in a whole different state of peace. I can allow physical pain to come and go. I can allow emotional pain to sit there without acting out of it. I believe that it's the true solution to human suffering is the, the ability to understand that there is an identification deeper than our bodies deeper than the surface identification of this egoic construct in your mind that you believe you are like I told you my egoic construct I'm Tim I'm divorced I'm a vocal instructor I've got a vocal program I'm you know I'm happy because of the peace like I've told you all of my labels which in truth are not me the awareness that's always there underneath everything that gives me peace to know no matter what shit's going down out here I can be there and be at peace I can allow anything to happen from there that's my note to sing and in singing that note what I found is and in being of service to others in singing that note that the more teachers I understand and um, and access and have really chewed on and absorbed and, and lived inside of what they have to say. The more teachers I've done that with, the more the better I become at being a, a teacher of the evolution of human consciousness, of a teacher of helping people step out of the shit that they may feel they're identified with and identifying with the peace that's always there and in that identification we move on okay so now on to talking about um, so that's me That's where I'm coming from Jordan B Peterson I have to just tell you a little bit about my uh, adventures with him and um, and then I'm going to talk about him compared to Eckhart Tolle 
him and how how I would use Jordan Peterson's teachings in my life compared to the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, compared to the teachings of Abraham Hicks, compared to there's some other teachers, uh, Matt Kahn, who talks about love, like super all about self-love. I use his teachings, the 12 steps of recovery, how I use those teachings in my life. And Jordan Peterson is a teacher that has a place inside of the tapestry of these teachings that I have learned to help others connect because all of these teachings have un- have shifted me in some way to be at the place where I'm at now, which is a place I would want you all to feel you're at. If everyone felt they as good about their lives as I feel about my life right now, and I don't mean just about the positive things that are happening, I mean the the deep peace that then we would all we'd be having a whole different experience so that's my being of service to you to share that right okay my journey with Jordan Peterson at first it started off as I was really turned off by him at first and also curious about him at the same time I was turned off in so far as I'm a believer of when I when I meet someone or when I'm looking at someone or when I'm talking to someone I'm taking in information not only taking in the information that's coming out of their mouth but I'm also taking into information their energy their the thousand little micro expressions that are coming out of them that tell me how they're doing that tell me What's their perspective on life? What's their, what would it be like to be inside of their life experience? What's their state of being? Do they have a state of being that seems to be aware and peaceful? Does this, is this a person that has, uh, is vibrating an energy of love, of light, of happiness, of, of something that I want? Or is this a person that's vibrating an energy of, ooh, I don't think I want that. Like, if I don't think I want it to look at the, I don't want to have the energy that that person has coming out of me, you know? Um, think about it like this. Like, if, let's say that you've got a, a family member or a friend or an acquaintance that, or a work person that is constantly negative, constantly negative, and they're smart. And the things they're saying are making sense, but it's their point of view is just negative. It's like, wow, they're seeing the world from a really shitty place. And you start, and you notice that you can start, you can be affected by that. You can go home and, and you start noticing, wow, those words are coming out of my mouth. I can't believe I'm saying the things just like that person did. And now it's like, whoa, you notice it. So I'm, I'm very careful with the teachers that I allow in based on their vibration, based on their energy, based on um, what, what they, you know, how they read, how they, how they feel. Like, the inf- like if I were to mute them talking, what information is coming to me from, what, from them? And I believe as much in that as in what's coming out of people's mouth. And so for me, when I first started uh, hearing Jordan Peterson talk, that was something that was off-putting to me was he was no this is not that's not good that's not good you know this is the like and I watched him and I was like man that and it almost makes my heart race watching him talk to people you know and of course that's supported by that on YouTube everybody it's like everyone wants to watch the car like wants to watch to watch the car crash it's like they want to watch him dismantle these these interviews like it's it's enticing to some part of our brain that like the you know the Colosseum and the gladiators like I want to see him mentally destroy somebody and um, so there's a part of me that was pulled into that just curious and then there's also a part of me that was like oh man I don't I don't want what he has if his energy is like that I don't want that and then you know in my meditating and in my life my awareness I notice that I am present to things that come up and oh, this is where the IGTV video ends. Go to the YouTube channel and watch it there. 
All right, so we're at 10 minutes. I'm gonna keep going. I still haven't even gotten into it yet. Um, so I was having this inner conflict about um, him being a vibe, being, him having an energy of, that I don't really want, but saying things that I think are brilliant. And then also on top of that, his level of genius. Like he, I've never seen a mind that has consumed so many books that can access them laterally, vertically, in every direction and pull things and put them together and shift them and this and that and that and then repackage it to you so quickly that it's almost hard for me to keep up, like I, I was like, okay, oh, I get you, okay, like, okay, good, over there. Was, what do you mean? What do you mean by a tyrannical little? Like, okay, okay, I, I think I get you. Like, his brain is fascinating, and so on one level, it's just the fascination of his level of genius that pulled pulls me in, and so, and I had this, and I'd been watching. I watched him on Joe Rogan uh, first, and I, I was really, I found what he was saying very interesting. And um, vibrational, like truthful, from the the energetic perspective that he's coming from. Uh, how do I? Okay, should I break that down? Let me break down what I mean by that, because I think if you are a Jordan Peterson person and you've gotten this far in the video, you'll be like, okay, here he goes. He lost me. The like if I'm in a super happy state of being, you know, like let's say I've been running and I get back and I'm elated and I'm feeling good and I'm, the thoughts that come in my head, the perspective I have from feeling fucking great all the time is a different perspective than when I've been sitting in the muck and I've been looking at the darkness and I've been feeling bad. Like the perspective that the vibration, the, 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 how we're feeling, what thoughts we've allowed to persist in our mind affect our perspective. And when I heard that he, uh, when he has in his home uh, Nazi memorabilia, for not because he's a neo-Nazi, but because he want, and this, I believe this is what he said in the interview, was because he wants to remind himself of the potential horrors of humankind, which was ultimately his primary uh, axiom, if that's the right word, that he focused on with his pursuit of um, trying to find uh, a clear thing that he could say was universal between all religions that they all agreed on. Like he could say, well, they, this one says this, this one says that, but one thing they all agree on is that it's horrible. How did he say it in the 12 steps? He, 12, 12, uh, uh, 12 rules for life. He said, um, and you can, I will get, I'll get the words not right exactly, but he was saying that the only thing he could find across, you know, all of these different teachings was that everyone agrees that it's horribly wrong to uh, torture and be cruel just for the sake of being cruel. Um, and that was the one thing that everybody was like, yeah, we agree on that, you know? And so he said, okay, fine, I'll start there. Like, I want to fix that. And that's kind of where he's come at the world in his, everything that's come out is this idea of him uh, making sure we don't go back again to the some of the so we're turning away from the horribleness that's that's possible in being a human being and and so that for me as someone who's you know I quit watching the walking dead because I got like I realized it was making me feel gross I don't watch horrible movies now like I used to love horror movies and things but I don't like I I'm really careful about what I allow in without denying the truth. Like, see, there's an interesting thing. You can just say, oh, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. I don't believe in that. I believe in allowing things to surface, whatever they surface, whether we perceive them to be good or bad. And we just allow ourselves to experience and learn from it and move on. That's how I live my life. But I'm very careful not to dwell in the darkness. That's the thing. I'm very careful not to dwell there because... Uh, 
because I do, but this is one of the biggest things I believe. I believe what we focus on, we get more of. If you focus on darkness, you're going to manifest darkness, you're going to have darkness, you're, you're going to live darkness. If you focus on love and light and peace and higher vibration and how do I, how do I find happiness and more of this and baselining higher levels of joy in your life, you're going to have more of that. Your focus is a huge, huge, huge part of it. And when we're comparing Jordan Peterson to um, the mindfulness movement, that one little piece there, I don't think he would be in alignment with. I think that's, I think he obviously doesn't, he obviously hasn't chosen the path of, oh, I wonder if I keep focusing on this stuff all the time. Uh, I wonder if I keep focusing on it that I will just be li be manifesting more of it just by focusing on it. I don't think that thought crosses his mind. And also, I want to say, I believe what he had... Now, this is the interesting thing. I've been saying all of this. Now that I've read his book, The Twelve Rules for Life, I can say he does have a note of positive influence. He does have, as a teacher in this world, he's got something to say. And, and I'm, I find that like I had to reconcile that whole aspect of, well, how can I feel that he has a teaching that's, that's good for us, that still is also kind of, um, you know, his teaching to me, relative to the other teachers that I've that I that I read that I read regularly or study regularly, um, his teaching has a lot of this feeling to me of someone who uh, believe like who focuses a lot on the the catastrophe potential in life and how to be ready for it when it happens. And that's important to be ready for catastrophe when it happens in a very real world practical way um, and and that's not a message that I'm going to live with but it's a message I'm going to learn from like he feels like to me someone who has gone into the depths of hell fought every demon slayed every dragon went right up to Lucifer, banged heads with him, took him down, came back with his head and said, here, we don't need to do this anymore. Like, he has that energy to me. And I feel like the things that, you know, he's doing a lot of commentary on how to take our society and direct it toward not doing, being horrible again. Like he... He feels that the pat, you know, like he was fired as a professor because he went up against the laws of, um, they were trying to say that you had to, it was something with gender, there was some gender language things where they were, you, you had to observe pronouns in a certain way, I think is what it was. And he was like, no, you can't tell me that I need to do this by law. Like this is not acceptable because he, has he's re, you know he can see that how that taken to the nth degree can be really bad for society and he if you go up against him on that topic <laughs> good luck cuz nobody has nobody has even nobody comes out making any sense to what he says in that way and i feel that he's not a teacher that I can take a bite of every day. And that's what that's where I've reconciled it, is I've realized he's a teacher that I can, that I've taken what he's learned. I've read his book. I almost didn't read it, but my girlfriend read it, and she loved it. And I thought, okay. Uh, and I was resistant. And because I was resistant to reading his book, I looked at that. I was like, uh, when I'm resistant to things, I go the other way. I do the opposite. And so I read his book because I was having such strong opinions about him. I had to actually be authentic and practice what I preach and 
Now, I'm not going to talk about him until I've really gotten into what he's saying, like what he's all about. And I have to say, as much as as much as I, I feel because of his vibration, because of the way he talks and the way he makes me feel when he talks, he doesn't, I, you know, compared to the way when Eckhart Tolle talks, sometimes I'll listen to Eckhart Tolle and I'll just, I, I tap into that awareness. Like my body, my blood pressure goes down. My, I feel peace. I feel love. You know, I listen to other teachers, Abraham Hicks. I get excited about, I get, I get a love, excitement, gratitude feeling that makes me want to get up and dance. You know, like I usually like to, in my day-to-day interact with teachers that have that impact on me. But I'm also a person that has done hardcore 12 steps. I, I did inventory work on things I felt guilty, ashamed of, resentments I had for like six months. I had like, I think, six or seven notebooks of just single line resentments or things that bothered me that I went through and talked through with another person, made peace with, made amends where it was healthy to make amends for. Like, I've done that too. So where Jordan Peterson falls from me into my, into my world is that the things he has put together to help us not repeat the past. Thank you, Jordan. Like, Thank God you were born and thank God not only that you're keeping us from going down this path, that you're also providing a voice that I believe is not heard out there right now. And it's, you know, we're, we're in a culture where there is a huge surge in the rise of the woman in our, in our society, the rise of the, you know, the Me Too movement, the, the, um, stepping out of the any feelings of oppression and um and as this is happening as this rise is occurring jordan is providing a voice to help men figure out how to be um not feel sort of diminished in the rise of woman and actually build you like you know, allowing women to do what they're doing, and then men also learning how to be a new man, how to take responsibility. He's all about sit up straight, take responsibility, cut the shit, get things going, do do the, uh, you know, if, you, if you're trying to do something and you can't get going doing it, aim lower, aim lower, just get going, get moving, get, be responsible, don't be a shitty person. Like he's he's got messages that in all of this kind of sensitivity and this openness that society has, this love embrace, this like we need everyone to be equal, everyone to, you know, he's this voice of get your shit together, stand up, do what's right. He's got that. And I think a lot of people have misunderstood him in that they try to pin him as right wing or pin him as some people say alt right. And some people say they, you know, they're trying to pin him with the Nazi stuff. But he's so not that. Like the whole, he has Nazi memorabilia to remind himself of those horrors so we don't ever go back there. Like that's how his mind is seeing it. It's not, he's not affiliated with this stuff. He's not affiliated with anything. He feels very, he'll think about everything very much the way he does. And he'll study the shit out of it and he'll think about it and he'll talk about it. But he's not going to, he's not going to affiliate with anything. That's my, that's my opinion. Um, he just has his perspective on what he feels is the right way forward for humanity. And I can say that the things he's brought up, that he brought up in his book, he resonates in my world of teachers. Like if I were to take and sort of lump them together, I would say Eckhart Tolle, I put him into the Zen Buddhist category, the stepping out, the checking out, the becoming present to myself as awareness, the, the just go back to the bliss of the awareness and you live there and be peaceful. You always can go live on a rock and just meditate and bliss out if you want. It's always okay. It's, it's uh, you know, the end of your suffering is always right there. There are teachers like that. Then there are teachers like the Abraham Hicks, which is like, 
It's all about focusing on positive, focusing on what you want to do, focusing on ro putting rockets of desire up into your universe and, and allow, and the joy is just in the creating and the co-creating with the universe, you know, and there's a whole world of teachers there, Michael Beckwith, you know, the book, The Secret, and every law of attraction teacher, like there's a, a category there. Then I would say there's another category, which is where I would put Jordan Peterson, I'd put the 12 steps of recovery, you know, this, and people that are into the cut the bullshit, let's get to the truth of things, look at yourself honestly, don't lie to yourself, tell yourself the truth. Like he falls into this category of, uh, of teachers like that. And, and they're useful. Like I, if we take, take them all, if we take all of these teachers, and if I think about in my day to day, how I would integrate them. Every day I ask myself, what's bothering me? I look at my truth. I look at the, you know, I have operating software still in me that is not the most pure high vibrating. And I look at that every day. What's bothering me, Tim? Tim, what's bothering you? Oh, you're thinking about that again, huh? You want to be thinking about that? You don't have to. Oh, you're going to anyway? Okay. All right, you're done. Now let's guide the mind here. Okay. Nope. We're done here. All right. What are we on? Okay. Here we go. Like, um, I still have, you know, I still have things to look at. And so I use teachers like, I use inventory work, like 12 step inventory work. I use this rigorous sort of self honesty and discipline that Jordan Peterson would talk about. He's very much, you know, it's very much about discipline and responsibility. I'm very much about taking ownership of the things we've done and the things we're doing. And I don't, I can't live there. That's too, you know, that vibration is necessary to make sure that your ego is, you're not lying to yourself because it's very easy to lie to ourselves. Our egos love to create all sorts of funny things. Eckhart Tolle, I go to him every day in his world, the Zen world, the world of none of this matters. I'm not my thoughts. None of this matters and everything matters at the same time. I'm in that land of paradoxes are okay. And I live there and I get to that identification of the awareness that is inside of me that I'm aware of right now, that I can feel in my body, that I can feel behind my eyes, that I can observe these words coming out and I'm just that awareness right there. And I identify with that. And I hang out there. And that's useful. And also, it's useful in this world, the laws of attraction world. It's useful for me to vibrate with excitement about creating in this, in this, you know, ex whatever it is, this human thing that's happening for the next uh, however many years it's going to happen for me or for you. So, the whole thing that I want to say that is important about this video that I really, if you got this far into this video, that I want you to take is I, Jordan Peterson, genius, powerful, read him, s learn him, live, live his message and integrate it with the messages of laws of attraction, of manifesting a life that you want and integrate them with peace, with the practice of a daily practice of tapping into the inner peace that's always there, no matter what's happening in your external world. Jordan Peterson's solutions are r external world, real world solutions, many of them. And they're great. You want those. You don't just want to sit on the rock and zen out. I, I mean, maybe you do. I kind of do sometimes. <laughs> but I know that that's not why I'm here. I've done that for a while and I kept having this tapping, this intuitive tapping of, go back, Tim, go back to the world. You need to share the message, you know? Like, like that's what I feel. Jordan Peterson is like, when shit's going down, this is what we do. Like, and there, you need that. Like, that's a be he does that really well. And you need someone who's looking at where the collective ego, the collective identification is heading and can say, nope, we need to turn the ship that way. This is dangerous rocks ahead. I'm so thankful he's here to help us for that. 
but I don't want to live like I can't watch videos of him every day. I can't twelve the twelve uh, the twelve rules for life. I read it. I, I read it very carefully, um, and I paid attention to my vibration when I was reading it. Um, and I can say because he, you know, it's kind of like I don't want to do inventory. I don't want to spend all of my meditation in the morning doing inventory work on myself. I don't want to do that. Like that's um, that's almost self. That's almost abusive to myself. And and that's one thing I f- do feel like. That's almost what I feel sometimes with him energetically is like he's abusive to himself. Like there's, like he's a great psychoanalyst. I, I wish he could flip out and look at himself and, and tap into. I don't know if how, how he would look at himself though. But I feel, you know, he's on the carnivore diet now, which is like, oh, that's hard. And every time he talks about the diet, he says, unfortunately, I am on this diet. I wonder how he would feel about the idea of if he were to sit down What I would, here's my challenge for Jordan Peterson, because I watched a video on him about meditating. And to see, because I was curious if he meditated. My suspicion was that he doesn't meditate the way that I mean meditating, which is to tap into the awareness that is self and spend time there and then get to a place of no thought and exist as your self as awareness and sort of see what happens. Like, that's the deepest level of meditation where I feel the most surrender and the most peace in my life. And my challenge for you, Jordan, if you're watching this video, God, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Would be, you know, you, Michaela, your daughter challenged you to try this diet. You're like, anyone can do anything for a month. I'll try this diet. And you kept doing, that's how you got to the carnivore diet. I challenge you for a month to meditate for 30 minutes every morning, just sitting still, sitting quiet, and spending time becoming present to yourself as the awareness that's inside of yourself. You can start with an inner body meditation, meditate into your hands and hold your awareness in your hands. When your mind, when a thought comes up, bring your awareness back to your hands. Do both hands first, try to move it to your feet. And then if you can turn up your awareness to feel your whole body's inner awareness feeling at once, it's an Eckhart Tolle meditation. I'd be very curious if you tried that for a month. And if you could get to a place where you can quiet your thoughts and get to a place of stillness, if you could do that, Jordan, that would be amazing. I would love to hear what you'd have to say about that. Because that's the thing that I believe that, you know, when someone is has not had that experience, when someone's not living as the awareness that they are, and truly identified with that to a place of being okay with the whole thing, being okay with planets colliding, being okay with the end of humanity or the rise of humanity or the coming and going of things, that like, we are this awareness that is there. Like when you've had the experience of that in your everyday life, you're, you're different. You have a different vibration. You have a different energy about you. And my challenge, Jordan, I do have a challenge for you. And maybe you've done this and you're like, ah, it didn't work for me. I don't know. But I'd love to hear your report on that. That's my challenge. Um, And what else do I have to say? I think I might be, I think I might be out of stuff. I've thrown my challenge out to Jordan. I've thrown my respect out to him that he has changed my life. I talk all the time now about, um, he said, chaos versus order and how it's important to have a balance of that in your life. That's very powerful. I've been, I've, that's come out of my mouth several times in a very useful way. As a music teacher and as a singer, great art is chaos versus order, you know? And um, so there you go. I love him. I can't in- interact with him every day. He has a place in my life. I'm thankful he's here. I'm thankful to hear the stories of so many people's lives he's turned around and gotten them on the right path. And if you're one of those people and you found your way to this video, my encouragement is take do some next steps in learning about how to tap, how to do Zen meditation, read some Eckhart Tolle, and also do some learning about how the laws of attraction work. If you want to have real fun, take all of these teachers, combine them. We live in this world where all of these teachers are so accessible because like 
I don't know why, actually, I didn't mean to say because. We live in this world where all of these teachers are accessible, so let's use them. You know, they're not, we're not, we're, all of these teachers are not accessible for us to argue about who's right or who's wrong. All of these teachers are accessible for us to try their teachings out for ourselves and see how they work. And that's my encouragement to you. Listen to Jordan Peterson. Listen to any, listen to every teacher you can think of and pay attention to how it makes you feel when you listen to the teacher. What kind of thoughts come in your mind when you listen to the teacher? What does your, how is your life changing when you follow the teachings of these teachers? Do the experiments. That's my encouragement. Be an experiential and an experimental student. That's what I'm doing. All right, there we go. 35 minutes on Jordan B. Peterson versus all the other things I know. <laughs> Love you, Jordan. Have a beautiful day.